All right, so the next thing we're gonna take a look at is gonna be the use of capnography on respiratory distress and sepsis patients. In that case, you're gonna be using this disposable piece, this oral nasal cannula. The disposables that have supplemental oxygen will include this green tube set, which can be plugged into your oxygen port. When providing oxygen in that way, rather than just driving it into the patient's nostril, it's gonna push the oxygen through these little pinholes. That develops a cloud of oxygen around their mouth and nose, which clinically speaking is a more effective way of delivering oxygen to that patient because if they're breathing heavy out of their nose or mouth, you're gonna provide oxygen to them either way. The way this disposable piece is set up allows again for a heavy mouth breather or nose breather to have the values recorded either way. So what we talked about was on a cardiac arrest patient, whether or not you saw a waveform on the screen, right? That dictated whether or not you had properly intubated that patient. In this case, on a respiratory distress or sepsis call, you're gonna see all different shapes of waveforms on the screen. And the shape of that waveform is gonna determine what's causing the distress on the patient. So an asthmatic patient, for example, is gonna present a shark fin shaped waveform. Your goal, just like it would be for a, a cardiac arrest call, would be nice, flat, plateaued waveforms on the screen, showing a proper respiratory cycle. If I see that shark fin shaped waveform, I can say to myself, hey, that's an asthmatic patient. I know what to do to treat an asthmatic patient and then see how they react to that treatment accordingly. The process is exactly the same. So you hit the CO2 button, plug in your disposable piece. And I'll take a couple breaths here, you can see. Okay, so those nice flat plateaued waveforms are what we're shooting for. Now, the other subset that's started to become very popular in a lot of the protocols as they're getting rewritten is the use of capnography in monitoring sepsis patients. So the same way that you'd call a cardiac alert or a stroke alert, the idea of calling a sepsis alert is gonna give that receiving hospital an opportunity to get prepared and get antibiotics ordered for the particular patient that you're bringing in that you're suspecting uh, is suffering from sepsis. So, you know, obviously based on your local protocols, it's gonna help you dictate whether or not you call that sepsis alert, but for the most part, what you're looking for is an elevated heart rate, whether or not the patient has a low or high temperature, and then also the end tidal value, so whether or not they're blowing off CO2 in an appropriate fashion. That seems to be becoming more and more popular throughout uh, the area that I cover especially.